prayers and thanks for all the blessings that you are giving to me and first of all let me inform you that my today's topic is going to be coulomb's law as we know that someone had sent uh, someone had said to me to make a video or coulomb's law so today we'll be discussing over coulomb's law that first of all the question arises that what is coulomb's law okay that's the main point okay later we'll be discussing uh, about the equation of coulomb's law later about importance of coulomb's law okay those things we can discuss so first of all what is coulomb's law okay just like uh, coulomb's law we can know that it is any law okay that's very simple thing okay given by coulomb the great scientist so okay the great theoretical physicist so first of all what this coulomb's law states that's our question so first of all let me inform you that just like if we have any two charges just like newton's law of gravitation first of all let me do a recap of the law of gravitation universal law of gravitation universal law of gravitation just like okay newton's law okay what newton's universal law of gravitation had said okay newton's law had said that actually if we have just like any two masses okay here we have m1 and one mass here we have m2 then just like imagine the distance between them is r okay distance between them is r later there will be a force present between them that will be a attractive force okay because, because gravitational force is always attractive okay m1 and m2 will be attracted towards each other by a force that is proportional to the product of masses and is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them that was newton's law universal law of gravitation this was newton's universal law of gravitation so first of all let me inform you that coulomb's law is very similar to newton's law universal law of gravitation just like in this we had okay about masses only difference is this at in coulomb's law we have about charges okay in coulomb's law we can see okay in coulomb's law what the main point is okay coulomb's law what main point is that just like imagine we have two charges okay one here positive charge okay we have two charges one here positive charge and one here imagine any kind of charge just like uh, imagine uh, one small positive charge we have two charges positive charge and one more positive charge this be q1 and this be q2 now here just like you know newton's law was saying distance between them is r here also let us imagine distance between them be r okay now here you newton's law was saying okay force is proportional to the product of masses of two objects okay and it's inversely proportional to the square of distance between them and coulomb's law is also very similar only what it says that there will be a force attractive or repulsive just like in newton's law gravitation is always attractive but this force electrostatic force may be attractive or, or, or repulsive now here what it says that this kind of force between those two charges always between two charges there will be applied a force electrostatic force or we can call columbian force so this columbian force is proportional directly proportional to the product of charges here it was masses here charges and is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them both laws follow inverse square law okay inverse square law you know so here what it can say that just like here it was f is proportional to the m1 m2 divided by r square but here what we have that in this case f is proportional to the q1 q2 divided by r square this this kind of force is directly proportional to the product of masses and uh, sorry charges and is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them so this is called the coulomb's law okay just like how this was newton's universal law of gravitation this is called the coulomb's law okay and always remember with universal law of gravitation and coulomb's law both follow this inverse square law why because f is proportional to the 1 by r square okay in both we have the same rule f is proportional to the 1 by r square or f is inversely proportional to the square r square so both follow the inverse square law now here what we can see now here just like gravitation is always attractive what about electrostatic force that may be attractive also repulsive also but how we may come to know about whether that is attractive or repulsive 
just like if we have two positive charges then they will repel each other and two negative charges will also repel each other but one negative and one positive will attract each other why it is such just like imagine so okay just like uh, magnet we have seen just like when we have same charges on both magnets same charges present and then when we try to attach those two magnets so they just try to repel each other okay such case also sometimes with magnet happens okay we have two magnets and imagine both magnets have uh, okay come across the same kind of charge okay both magnet uh, charges are like charges okay means either both are positive or both are negative then when we bring them close to each other so they repel why they repel because we have like charges here that's the coulomb law means if we have just like here force will be repulsive here force will be repulsive not attractive if we will have two negative charges then it will be repulsive but if we have one positive and one negative okay just like unlike charges always repel each other but unlike charges attract each other so here coulomb's laws is that like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other now what we can see coulomb's law in vector form also we can see but first of all in this video only coulomb's law so uh, we can see so this is f proportional q1 q2 by r square okay its direction we came to know about force uh, whether it will be attractive or repulsive let us okay what about equation only what we have to do that at the place of uh, proportionality okay when will be putting equal okay when will be putting equal here so proportionality constant will uh, okay will fall here as we all know if uh, one proportionality constant will be coming here so let it be named k so f is equals to k times q1 q2 divided by r square okay so here what we can see that f equals to k q1 q2 by r square and sometime for vacuum okay for vacuum we can call that always for vacuum okay for vacuum k value comes to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon not okay 1 by 4 pi epsilon not 1 we know 4 pi we know epsilon not means permittivity of free space it's uh, also given value will be okay in our book okay just like and k so let me inform you that k value for vacuum k value is this and when will be solving this then finally will be getting k equals to 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 okay now 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 other whichever values we have we can put okay and now whichever units we have we can also drive the units okay as we are doing just like uh, how in gravitation we have drived the unit of universal gravitational constant like this we can drive so here in si units 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 in si units now here what we can see here only what we can see that then at the place of k can we put 1 by 4 pi epsilon not of course we can put then f is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not and here times q1 q2 divided by r square our final equation so here final equation we are getting that this electrostatic force is equals to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon not multiplied by No, q1 q2 divided by r square means the force the electrostatic force is directly proportional to the product of charges and is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them so this is the main coulomb's law okay about that describes about this okay this kind of force with such a force that may be attractive and repulsive both okay just like here q1 q2 we have to put the magnitude Okay, here means uh, just like uh, ma only magnitude we have to put. Just like it's any uh, just like magnitude when we'll be putting magnitude. So we'll have to do mod of Q1 and Q2. Okay, mod of Q1 into mod of Q2. Because when we'll be doing mod of Q1 into mod of Q2, then what we can see that even negative charges will become positive, and that's our point. because we have to make it positive so this why we will always only put the magnitude we will be putting the magnitude of charges and if we have to find out their direction so according to the charges will be finding out later but mainly you have to put the mod of that means magnitude of the charges so what we can write f is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not times the mod of q1 into mod of q2 divided by r square so that was my today's topic thank you